Okay, so let's get rolling. Uh, hello, everybody. This is a webinar from AbilityNet called Building Accessible Carousels. I'm Mark Walker, and um, you can see on the video there, Aladdin. Hi, Aladdin. Hello. Nice Hi, Mark. Hi, everyone. I'm Aladdin. Great. We can yeah. see you. Great. So we're going to run through some slides. We're going to talk about accessible carousels. There's a little bit of interactive um, uh, question and answer stuff in there. And at any time that you have any questions, then down the right hand side is a questions box. Um, if you have any technical issues um, now, then please let me know. Um, but also, as we go through, I'll be asking you for your feedback. And that's where you would type your, your responses there. So this is all about building accessible carousels. It's one of a series of uh, webinars that we do monthly, looking at accessibility issues. Um, with us is Aladdin. Uh, can you tell us about your role, Aladdin, and um, uh, what you're doing at AbilityNet? Yes, of course. Uh, so I work in AbilityNet for the accessibility and usability um, services. And um, a day-to-day -day role would be working um, with clients um, national and international to ensure that their um, products, whether uh, mobile apps, web applications, uh, mainly, and other digital products as well, that they're accessible uh, and um, to a high level of accessibility guidelines. Also, we work with um, in the usability also uh, uh, section. Uh, where we do user testing and we get uh, feedback from users on their products. I also work in preparing trainings, usually for developers, UX designers, and uh, uh, mainly, yes. Cool, thank you. And um, I'm Mark Walker, I'm the Head of Marketing and Communications. I host these webinars. Um, AbilityNet, for those of you who don't know, is a charity. We help disabled people achieve their goals at home, at work, and in education. We have lots of services that we use to deliver that. Um, accessibility testing, consultancy, as Aladdin's just explained. We also provide assessments in the workplace to help people identify the technology that would be right for them. Um, we do assessments for students who are eligible for disability student allowance. And we have a network of volunteers who provide support to uh, people in their homes. Uh, we have a tool called My Computer My Way, which provides free advice about all the mainstream accessibility settings in every device. And we also have something called Tech for Good Awards, which we run. The awards are open now, actually, for nominations. We run those with BT. So, you know, a big range of stuff that we do. Of course, our webinars, are for us, are a great way of sharing our knowledge. We can run a live event like this, um, but we can also... Um, record this, it gets saved onto YouTube, we publish it on our site and becomes part of uh, our role in terms of sharing knowledge about how to make the internet more accessible for everybody who wants to use it. Um, so today we're going to look at uh, carousels. We're going to uh, talk about what are carousels, the advantages and disadvantages of carousels. Um, we're going to talk about common carousel accessibility issues and there are plenty of them. And then in particular, we're going to give some top tips on how to address that um, for particular to think about keyboard users. You people, of, your, your site visitors who are using assistive technology, um, people, with user, people with visual and cognitive impairments and how you can cater for them. And then we're going to end up with a carousel checklist, accessibility checklist. So um, before we do that, I just want to ask you why you're here using a poll. So I'm going to pop up a poll and hopefully you can click on that to tell me whether your interest is as a developer, or as a web designer, or an accessibility specialist, or other, if that doesn't quite fit um, what your interest is, then click one of those and then drop something into the questions box, just so that we know why people might be here, and then we can potentially answer questions as we go along and think about uh, what your interest may be. Uh, so I've got uh, most of you have voted. I've got mainly web designer and developer. Um, there's a couple of others. If you could just let me know in the questions what it is that you are potentially interested in, then we can make sure that we cover that. Quality assurance, great. Thank you, Lina. And there we go, I think. I think it's done. Great. So if I close the poll and show you, just to let you know, we've got um, 
uh, developers, web designers, accessibility specialists, and somebody in particular around quality assurance. So um, this is going to be a slightly technical talk, so I think that probably suits uh, the, the content that we're looking at. And um, I think we're, we're on the right track in terms of what you're going to be interested in. So I'm going to just swap over and let, um, uh, and let him take control of the, um, the video. Just do that two seconds. So you should be a, should be asked to be a presenter now, Aladdin. And then if you click on that, we should get across your two your slides. There we go. Great. So off you go. Okay. okay. Uh, is my slide visible? Yep. Yes, perfectly. It's great. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, so today um, I'm I'm going to talk about carousels. Um, so the first thing I'll just go quickly through what a carousel is and what makes a carousel a carousel basically. Um, so a carousel usually is defined by that it's an, a component which consists of a number of slides. Um, these slides usually um, have content which is either uh, images or it could be uh, normal text with links uh, it depends actually on the content um, and what makes a carousel a carousel is basically is just the slides are shown one at a time so users usually cannot see the whole carousel they have to um, see one at a time. Other names of carousels are slideshows and sliders. Um, basically the structure of a carousel as you can see on the screen here um, it has um, a, a pose, this is like an accessible carousel, usually a lot of carousels don't have this component, the pose and play buttons and it has next uh, which you can see here on the sides. These are to, to take you to the next and previous pages and here the boxes where the, usually the content is and at the bottom uh, at the bottom is the uh, the pages which also click usually should be clickable pages. So this is briefly um, uh, what the definition of a carousel. Uh, uh, the other thing which I'm going to talk about is the popularity of carousels. So carousels um, have been used for a long time. Uh, basically, in uh, for when uh, they've been used, they've been employed by designers for main main uh, for main objectives or main design concerns. So uh, they enabled uh, the designers to include more content in uh, less space so that it solves, this is the first uh, design issue it solved. That's why they've been used. And also uh, it helped um, designers to determine what's the most important uh, of this content to be displayed uh, for the viewer. So this uh, is the uh, advantage of using a carousel mainly. Now we come to the, but when uh, the use of carousel has been introduced, um, designers did not think of the possible issues that uh, come with such um, design. So the disadvantages of using carousel um, throughout user testing sessions, a lot of user testing sessions and um, Carousel proved that they're actually uh, the content within them tends to be ignored by users. So usually, uh, a user would come through the home page. This is where the carousel usually is, and they would they would ignore the important information within these carousels. And also, um, usually they tend to be ignored because the few users interact with them. They, they usually go to find what they're looking for through other means on the home page. And the most important factor of, uh, of why use of carousel should be avoided from, uh, is because of the accessibility issues that a carousel pose uh, on a, a big number of users. Um, so the problem with carousel is that if accessibility is not taken into consideration from the beginning, uh, it will for sure pose many accessibility issues for screen reader users, for uh, visually impaired users, for for keyboard users, so for a lot of users. 
and also, uh, uh, sorry, I forgot for users with cognitive impairments. And we will come, uh, we will come to these in a minute. So in the next slides, I'm going to talk about the accessibility issues, uh, which is the purpose of this webinar of why carousels should be avoided and if you are going to implement them on your website, then what steps you need to take from the beginning to ensure that uh, the carousel on your site is accessible to this variety of users. Aladdin, can I just, um, I just want to jump in a second just to make clear to people, if you have questions as we're going along, please ask them in the box there. So I'm going to be listening to what Aladdin is saying. I, I, can ask, I can step in with the questions if you have any. Um, I just wanted to check something here, actually. Uh, how many times a day do you see a carousel on a site that you're checking? Is it really common? Is it, a, you know, is everybody using them or are they less common than they were five years ago? It was obviously a time when everybody had one. Sorry, are you asking me, Mark? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Do, do you see yes, them? Yes, yeah. yes actually, they're, they're quite common uh, due to um, the reasons I've mentioned, um, which is... Uh, a lot of content, a little space, and also most importantly determine the important content display. So they're usually uh, quite popular and almost every single time um, I check the accessibility of a carousel, most of the time it has accessibility issues. So right. it's very rarely that you come across a carousel that is actually accessible so because of the reasons that the accessibility has not been taken into consideration when the carousel was implemented in the beginning. Yeah, and, and also I think when we started talking about this originally, our basic position at AbilityNet is try not to have one rather than... Yes, exactly. You know, the first point is that you've made it difficult for yourself by having one and then it can be made accessible but um, I, the reason I mentioned that is because you flashed past on the last screen, you, look, you showed our website and we've got a uh, carousel on there and I think that's probably been there four years um, and I remember I remember something similar being said at the time that it would be easier if you didn't have one um, and I think next time we um, we probably wouldn't put one on I think the new site that we have we're beginning to think about a new site and I think we would just remove it it hasn't done enough for us in terms of the click-throughs anyway and it is difficult to make accessible and every time we that's add true. content we have to think about accessibility again. So actually our starting point really is don't have a carousel and then the rest of everything you're about to say now is but if you have got one then here's what you need to do. Exactly. I think that's exactly. Position, isn't it? exactly. Yeah. I agree with this point. Great, thank you. Please uh, carry on, sorry. Yes, uh, thank you. And uh, so the accessibility of carousels, I've tried to divide them into three main categories. Uh, I divide the users that are affected, either keyboard users or assistive technology users who are, who are often uh, keyboard users if they are using a desktop, and uh, visual and cognitive impairments. Uh, so we will go through these one by one. The first group of users is keyboard users. So. A carousel, um, it should be accessible to keyboard users as any other uh, component on the page. So, uh, by that I mean that usually screen reader users uh, rely on the use of uh, the tap key to navigate between interactive elements. And by interactive elements, I, I mean any element that can be uh, clickable, such as, um, for example, as you on a carousel, the relevant thing would be the next and previous buttons, which allow users to uh, go to the next slide or previous slide. So these elements should be keyboard accessible using the tab key. The other element that should be use, uh, be accessible using the tab key would be um, the links within a carousel. So any links, any clickable images which act as links, they also should be accessible using the tab key. Uh, and also, the, for example, other, other controls, if you decide to implement, uh, as you can see down here, the, the one, two, three, which is uh, the number of the slide. So these also should be accessible using the tab key. And the pause and play button, of course, the same thing applies to it. While using the tab key, um, the other thing which you need to check is 
do you have a visual focus indicator? Sometimes users, uh, keyboard users can be lost within the page, so they don't know exactly where they are. So sometimes you could have the tab key working, but because there is no focus indicator which is visible, so they will not be able to interact with that component. So also, so that's the important thing. So for, uh, for the visual indicator, you can set it uh, for example, you can make it dotted, or you can make it hashed, or you can make it underlined, as long as there is a border which is clear. Uh, one point uh, worth mentioning is that avoid, uh, avoid the outline of zero or none, because if you have these activated, um, you will end up with not having a visible focus indicator. Um, for the elements, actually, when you test the, the website, when you, when you test the carousel components and you check that actually some elements do not receive tab focus, then in this case, you can utilize the tab index attribute. attribute. And this tab index attribute makes elements which are not um, accessible using the tab key clickable. And the tab, the tab index has uh, values either minus one or one or zero, and each one of these uh, uh, has a different uh, function. Alavi, can I just ask a question a second? Somebody, yes, of course. Put, um, Bar yes. Barbara's asked, uh, if the best thing is not to have a carousel, can you actually make a carousel invisible? You were talking there about the outline, actually, is what made me think of it. If you put outline equals none, is it not better to just completely remove the question of the carousel being available at all in the accessibility skip content or something? Uh, if if you present the information within the carousel outside the carousel, uh, that's that's an option definitely. Okay. To make to make everything within the carousel the invisible. Yeah. So it depends whether it's actually got an equivalent. Elsewhere. Yes, exactly. So if you if you are sure that you've conveyed uh, everything within the carousel in a, in a, exactly the same way um, within the home page, for example, then yes, yes, yeah, you're welcome. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Barbara. Thanks for the question. Thank you. Yeah. So um, the next thing uh, I want to go through uh, for keyboard users is that um, also uh, the carousel keyboard issue uh, issues apply to the carousel as much as it applies to any other parts of the website. For example, if you check the accessibility of the website in general, uh, there are issues that's r r r um, that become apparent, for example, like um, keyboard trap. So you need to ensure that your carousel is actually not using a keyboard trap. By keyboard trap is that users, when they get into the carousel, they're not able to get out of it. So this is also needs to be into, uh, taken into consideration. You need to ensure that the carousel doesn't cause any traps. Um, another point is the focus of, uh, of the tab key. So for example, what, by that I mean if you use the tab key, to navigate, for example, to uh, number three, which is page number three or slide number three. So when you click on it, you need to ensure that actually it's functioning and working. And for the keyboard users, there is uh, an issue which is mainly related to screen reader users because also screen reader users use keyboard. So there is a problem which uh, becomes apparent uh, when you are a screen reader user, which is the focus, as I said. So you need to ensure that uh, if one of the slides is, is pressed, then the screen reader focus should be placed on the content of that slide and you you do don't, you don't leave the carousel so i hope this is clear yeah because usually uh with screen reader users if they go to slide number 3 and they click on slide number 3 and then they press the arrow keys usually the content that comes after the carousel is announced unless the focus is programmatically focused on within the carousel slide they will miss this content so this is for keyboard users. Um, we come to the second group of affected users. Uh, 
which is the assistive technology users. By assistive technology, of course, we mean uh, screen reader users and voice, uh, voice recognition software. Uh, for screen reader users, which is a big group of users affected by the carousels, and they have a lot of accessibility issues associated with them, is that usually users are not informed that they are within a carousel. So a good practice would be to inform users um, that they're actually in a carousel component. And by that, by doing that, you uh, inform that, okay, this is the beginning of a carousel and this is the end of carousel. So when they come into this component, they're informed that they are in a carousel. And when they get out of the carousel, they're informed that this is the end of the carousel component. Uh, another issue it has to do with the um, this, because carousel is is implemented in slides, and sometimes um, if the other slides are not hidden from assistive technology, users will not be able to interact with the carousel. Screen reader user will not be able to interact with the carousel as a sighted user is. So by that I mean you will read slide one and then you will go to the slide two, slide three, and screen reader will continue reading and reading and reading. And this is a problem because users will become overwhelmed and they will not, uh, they will not, they will become confused about, about the behavior. That's why it's advised that if a user is in a slide, for example, let's say slide one out of three slides, then slide two and slide three should be hidden from the screen reader user. And you can use ARIA hidden to do that as a solution. The other thing about uh, assistive technology uh, when users uh, interact with a carousel using a screen reader is, uh, is the use of labels and alternative text. Everything in the carousel such as uh, buttons, um, any interactive elements should have equivalent and descriptive text alternatives. So, for example, if you have a next and previous button, ensure that both of them ha are labeled uh, next and previous. And if you have a play and pause button, ensure that also uh, it has descriptive labels so that they're announced by the screen reader. And for the icons which you have the pages of the carousel also ensure that they have a uh, descriptive uh, label. Uh, I will show an example. Here you can see uh, this example. So here you have the next and previous buttons and then in the middle you have the slides. So here you can see that this is labeled as carousel panel 1, carousel panel 2 and carousel panel 3. So in this case users will know what these uh, buttons are referring to. So this is good. You, you, uh, the naming is optional. You can choose uh, slide one, slide two, slide three. So as long as or page one, page two, page three, as long as you uh, convey to the users what these slides are. Oh, sorry, before um, I jump to that one. Yeah, go on, Mark. Sorry. sorry, I've just got a question. Um, can the carousel start and end be indicated using ARIA attributes? Yes, so you would basically use um, the ARIA, uh, uh, yes, you can do that. So uh, it doesn't matter, I described by, labeled by, uh, as long as it's conveyed to users, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Great, thanks. Thanks for the question. It, it doesn't have to be visible, of course, to sighted users. You can, you can make this hidden, yes. Right, cool. Uh, Yes, this is regarding to the, um, also I forgot to mention, anything within the carousel, uh, for example, any content. So if you have images inside the carousel, ensure that they also have alternative text. If you have uh, headings inside the carousel uh, slides, also ensure that um, uh, they're marked up correctly as headings. Um, if you have links also uh, that open a new window, uh, so any treat anything within the carousel content uh, and ensure to make it accessible as well and also ensure that this content is accessible using the arrow keys because that's how usually screen reader users navigate through text is using the arrow keys. Um, the next 
that uh, I'm going to talk about is for the visual and cognitive impairments. So for this one, um, it's it has to do with users who are who get distracted by moving content. So usually a typical behavior of carousels that it updates automatically, and there is a lot of users who have um, short attention spans. So they will not be able to uh, focus a read quickly as the, con uh, the content is updating. So it's, it's, it's advisable that you uh, implement a pause button there. So uh, for this button there, as you can see here, uh, we have one on our website. It's just down there. So, so here at the bottom. It's, it's, it's for, uh, so the uh, default the default behavior should be that the carousel is not updated automatically and then if the users can update it by this choice also ensure that this uh, button is uh, labeled correctly otherwise they will be sure about it. Uh, the next that, bit. Sorry, can yes, I just sorry. ask something? Sorry, I've got a couple of questions which I think yeah, are helpful. Sure, sure. Yeah, I'm going to. Quickly, sorry. No, 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 no. It's not. It's uh, it's just a very helpful point. I did think it as you as it popped up. Is when you talk about cognitive impairments, is there anything particular that you are referring to? Uh, particularly, somebody said some people refer to autism as a cognitive impairment; others do not. I think what yeah, you were that, suggesting yeah. was you were talking about people either who couldn't see the screen very well, as opposed to couldn't see it at all. It's it, it actually it actually includes all these users. Yeah, so, yeah. It, it applies even to users who don't have these problems uh, because they will want to sometimes if you have a lot of text within the carousel they will want to take their time to read it as well. So, yes, it covers all these users. So I think this is a very important bit that they should have. That. Also, I forgot. Sorry for. Um, for the for the, for you for, for the screen reader users also, so it's worth mentioning as because I saw here number four. Uh, so it's worth mentioning that screen reader users are advised that this is the current uh, slide. So when the focus is here, uh, you can use area for example area current, and by using area current you can set the value for example area current uh, page or current step. By this when the screen reader focuses on this element, they will know that this is the actual the actual uh, slide which is visible. Uh, sorry, I forgot to add this point. The uh, last bit, which is about the visual and cognitive impairments, um, is re regard to visual uh, impairments mainly and users with low vision or users with um, color blindness, uh, all text within the carousel should be uh, implemented with the correct uh, and the sufficient contrast. And uh, because if this text doesn't have sufficient contrast, usually users will struggle to see it. Um, this also applies to images of text because some carousels rely on the use of text which is embedded uh, as image. Also this text should be uh, sufficient in contrast. Uh, so for the text on images, uh, usually the background uh, sometimes even the, um, so if you have even like if you have a simple text or in the background which has a lot of color, users usually struggle uh, um, on differentiating this text. So a good way of addressing this is using a transparent uh, transparent uh, text on the background. In this case, it will not uh, cause a problem. For uh, for the sufficient contrast, so we usually measure against the WCAG AA standards, and in this uh, in this standard, it's actually 4.5 to 1, so the, the contrast ratio. Uh, and for that, to check the color contrast is correct, you can use uh, these tools. So one of them is the colorsafe.co. This provides, uh, you can enter manually the values of the, the font size, you can also enter the color that you've used and it will give you 
uh, and the background color as well. So and if you enter these values, it will give you uh, if it's sufficient or not, the contrast. And also you have a contrast analyzer, uh, contrast analyzer, which is also valuable. So basically you can use, uh, you can check, you just click on the text and on the background and it will give you uh, if this is uh, sufficient or not, if this contrast is sufficient or not. Uh, any questions on this part? Yes. Uh, no, there's another general question which we'll come to in a second, I think. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we can take questions. Okay. Yeah. No, we'll do that in a second. Let's do the uh, do the checklist and then we can because uh, this yeah, one's okay. more general anyway. So. Yes. So uh, this is uh, a small checklist that I've put to uh, ensure that your character is accessible. Basically, you need to check that uh, all interactive elements can be navigated uh, by using the, uh, the keyboard and specifically using the tab key. If you have links, if you have buttons, if you have uh, any interactive component that's clickable or it can be interacted with a mouse is applied to it with this one. Also, uh, you need to ensure that uh, if you, for example, when the tab key or the hover key is on a link uh, on a page, for example, of the carousel pages, which is at the bottom of the of the bottom of the carousel, that they don't update automatically unless you click on them. Um, the third one is regarding uh, descriptive uh, alternative text. So all controls, uh, all buttons, all uh, any f images as well, if you implement them, they all should be uh, labeled correctly and ensure that the carousel doesn't cause keyboard trap and you can check that by running a keyboard test using the tab key and also um, using area attributes to specify select page. Uh, this uh, we've discussed as using area current for the current page and also um, providing a pose and play button to give the users the option to uh, to pause when whenever they want to to take more time in reading, and the last point, which has to do with uh, color contrast, ensuring that everything within the carousel has sufficient color contrast using the tool. Great, thank you. Yes, and I've just swapped over. Hopefully, that's seamlessly put my stuff. Back on the screen, I have the same slideshow just so that I can round us up. I've got a few questions here, but um, I think you've also got some additional resources that you think would be useful for people to have a yes, look at. Yes, here we go, these ones, yes. Uh, so if you want to read more, uh, I have these uh, links here. They talk in detail about creating an accessible carousel. And the tutorial actually from the W3 is quite comprehensive. It takes you through all the steps from the structure to the screen reader uh, behavior. Uh, and it points also to the WCAG guidelines regarding each slide of the carousel. Great. Uh, one of the, the question that I was holding off on that uh, Chris has asked is about WordPress. Uh, I don't know whether you do have any particular suggestions about a plugin and a carousel plugin that you think is more accessible than another. Or I guess it just needs to have the capability to do all the, the tagging properly. Um, yes. Um, uh, for for carousels, which are um, I've usually most of my work with carousels, the carousels that clients have used and they've implemented it themselves. So I'm not really uh, aware of a plugin which is accessible for carousels. Uh, sorry for that. Then. Right. Well, uh, does anybody have any questions? And we're, we're uh, um, uh, I'm just going to put a put a webinar uh, a poll up to ask you how well we've. Uh, answered your questions, but um, that's uh, that's fantastic. Thank you, Aladdin. And I think I think Thank you. the summary really, the summary is that if you're going to do a carousel, then just make sure you really really need it and you think it's going to do what you want. And then if you as you build it, it can be made accessible. There's clearly quite a lot in there in terms of making sure it can be used by different users on your site. Um, if you're trying to use it to drive traffic to particular parts of the site, then obviously there's a potential value to you of doing that. But um, uh, you know, do, our, our starting point is: Do you really need it? Is it really going to be valuable to you? Is there another way that people can navigate around? That seems to come across very clearly to me. Um, so, yes, if anybody has any last questions, um, how can you set 
aria on first and last slide and tell user that it is the first or last so how do you actually set that within the aria that's a code question i guess of what the uh, code sorry. It says how can you set aria on first and last slide and tell the user that it is the first or last so uh for for this uh, for, do you mean the the particular pages or do you mean the carousel as a whole for this one uh, i think they mean on this on the does that and um, it's it's Dawid who's asking, so um, I think if you can just clarify your question, Dawid, I think it's about the slide. Um, each slide, the, okay. Than the actual controls, yeah. For for each uh, for each slide, you you do, you don't need to specify that this is the beginning and end of the slide. You just need to specify that this is the beginning of carousel and the end of carousel. So before users get into the carousel, so it's worth having it at the top. And then when users decide to leave the carousels all together, then they should be told, okay, this is the end of a carousel. Great. Yes. Great, thank so you. you don't you don't need to have it on every single slide. You just need it uh, on a, the carousel as a whole. Great. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you, everyone. As you can see, uh, at least uh, everybody thought it was either, uh, most people thought it was either uh, met their needs or met some of their needs. The reason we ask this is because we do always look for other topics and other information that we could provide in future. Um, so please do um, when you when you um, you'll get a questionnaire from us as a follow up to the survey to, to the webinar. Please do let us know if there are other topics we could have covered in more detail or whether there's things that we haven't covered in here that you were hoping to cover. Um, and equally, if you do have questions. Um, you you know mail in and ask those questions. We'll do our best to answer them if we can. Um, we have another webinar booked. We're just sorting out the details. We, we just had to change what we're going to do, but it will be the last Thursday of April, which um, it will probably be about the business case for accessibility. Uh, we're just sorting out the details of that, but we'll be mailing out to everybody to tell you that the recording is available. Um, so uh, keep your eyes peeled for that, and um, it'll, at that point we'll tell you what the next month's topic will be. So thank you, Ladin. That's great. I think um, it's been really useful. And uh, as I say to everybody on the call, if you have any, any further questions, just let us know. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone.